Hello, hello! Today we're going to be talking about the difference between a bad guy and a villain. It could be as simple as the bad guy gets in the way of your protagonist, whereas your villain is, your, is their nemesis, but how is that ever enough? <laughs> so let's dig into this a bit more. Just a quick note about the word antagonist. I'm not going to be delving into what is an antagonist and what's the difference between an antagonist and a hero and a villain and a protagonist and so on and so forth um, because that is a long conversation that I don't want to have right now. <laughs> there has been a trend in recent Disney movies to do away with the villain in favour of a bad guy or a couple of bad guys and some unexpected events. And while this isn't strictly a bad thing, not only because it helps me demonstrate my point, but also because it teaches children about grey morality and all that kind of thing. I do think that there is a very simple reason for the removal of villains. These days, people are absolutely crying out for well-developed characters. There is a huge movement away from anything caricature-ish and towards fully fleshed out characters, be they good, evil or chaotic neutral. <laughs> Again, this is not necessarily a bad thing. But it does mean that writers have started to look at villainous characters to find out their motives and flesh them out and make them less evil for the sake of being evil. And then they do it to the point at which they kind of become too human to be considered a villain. And then their storyline gets changed. Take Elsa from Frozen as a prime example of this. She was the Snow Queen. She was the villain with an ice cold heart. And then in Disney's Frozen, she became too humanized and the whole story changed. Next thing you know, there's two bad guys and zero villains. So why are Hans and the Duke of Wesselton not villains? Well, there's two big reasons for that. Reason number one is they don't have much of an impact on the actual story. Think about it, if Hans wasn't a bad guy, the story could be essentially exactly the same with him just turning out not to be Anna's true love. He could kiss her, it wouldn't work, they would go, oh no, what do we do now? And they'd either decide that true love's kiss isn't, you know, the solution to all magic, or they would decide that, oh shoot, Kristoff must be her true love, and she'd have to go out into the snowstorm. Anna could still sacrifice herself for Elsa for some natural disaster or one of the Duke of Wesselton's goons or whatever. There's a lot of options for why she would need to sacrifice herself or be able to sacrifice herself and ta-da! Story exactly the same. The Duke of Wesselton, his whole purpose is to irritate. He was never intended to be the villain. He was always intended to just be a bad guy, a nuisance. Someone who got in the way and kind of got his comeuppance at the end. Problem solved. He is a subplot at best. <laughs> and reason number two is how much the audience sees and empathises with the villain's motive. I'm using empathise as quite a broad term here. It can also be used to, it can also be understand the villain's motive. So the reason Hans doesn't fit into this is because his motive isn't peppered throughout the story. You sort of vaguely can kind of read into the beginning of Love is an Open Door where he says he's been searching his whole life to find his own place. But that's it until he turns. Whereas, for example, Mother Gothel from Tangled is shown to steal baby Rapunzel for her magical hair. She's portrayed as vain, selfish, and unempathetic. You can see exactly why she's chosen to do it because it's right there. You can see exactly why she's so abusive to Rapunzel because it's right there. If Rapunzel leaves she'll find out the world isn't such a terrible place, the magic hair will be gone and Gothel will die. Age and die. <laughs> so how can you make a well-written villain? Ones that aren't caricatures but aren't too humanised that the audience starts to see things from their perspective. Your villain can be the polar opposite of your protagonist and since I started with Disney, let's carry on. We're gonna pick Quasimodo and Frollo for this from The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Quasimodo is sweet, he's naive and he's selfless. He literally risks his life 
were his new friends, just to help them out. Frollo is harsh, manipulative and selfish. I mean, just look at Hellfire, the song, and you'll see all of that. And option number two is that you can make them mirror each other. You can give them both kind of the same traits, but taken to extremes. For example, Aladdin and Jafar. Aladdin and Jafar both want more than they have. They're both willing to use magic and kind of bend the world for them. And they can both be considered a little bit selfish. The difference is all in the context. Aladdin wants more because he has nothing. Jafar wants more because he wants more. Aladdin focuses his world changing on improving himself. He wishes himself into a prince. Jafar happily manipulates and magics other people. He magics himself into the Sultan and because of his intent that means he has deposed the Sultan. He enslaves Jasmine because he wants to have her at his mercy. Aladdin is selfish up to a point. He gives up his bread to the starving children, but he still wants a lot. He still wants a palace for himself, not just because he's poor, but because he wants one. Jafar is selfish to the extreme. He wants everything for himself and he doesn't care who gets hurt in the process. Ultimately, fleshing out a villain might de-escalate them to the status of bad guy or generic problem that the protagonist has to deal with or ugh, even good guy. But it doesn't have to. Villains and bad guys both have a place in the story. They each serve a purpose and a lack of a villain isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's not something we all should start relying on. Remember that you are allowed to make fleshed out, unempathetic but understandable villains. You're allowed to make villains who represent or hold views that you don't agree with. Gaston is a huge misogynist. He's totally anti-intellectual and this is what makes him the perfect villain for Belle. He's not just a bad guy, he is the villain. He's the thing that she has to defeat in order to be happy. He represents everything that Belle doesn't want. Everything that Belle is dissatisfied by in her life. She doesn't want to live in the small village anymore because it's incredibly anti-intellectual and everybody loves Gaston. She doesn't want to marry Gaston because she knows that she will go from having glorious inventions and being able to read and being able to go where she wants to being re relegated to just being a housewife. And while there's nothing wrong with being a housewife, it's not what she wants. So much of villainy relies on context and you're not necessarily writing for, you know, a giant children's conglomeration like Disney, where if you write too compelling a song for a villain, then the little kids are going to want to be the villain and that's bad. You have to bear in mind as well that inevitably people are going to like some of your villains. Whether they like them because they're well written villains or whether they like them because of the point of view that they hold or whether they like them because they're played by Tom Hiddleston <laughs> or whether they like them because they've got one of the most compelling voices of the entire series. I mean, I know James L. Jones is Mufasa, but Mufasa dies really quickly. And we all love Scar. We all love him. I love Scar. Scar says that if you liked the video, you should give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment with your favourite Disney villain or your favourite villain and why they're your favourite in the comments below. I've said comments twice. Scar, stop it. You're supposed to be the sensible one here. You should subscribe to the channel and you should follow me on social media. I am on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. If you'd like to support what I do, you can donate to my coffee account. There's a link in the description bar below and I will see you next time.